Thursday night, September 6th at 617 Lady Street, just across the bridge in the heart of the Vista, Columbia's premier entertainment and dining district, we stop by M2 Boutique and join New Jersey native turned Carolina girl, Carissa Strickland and a local group of designer dudes and divas as they celebrated Fashion Night Out, a global movement. For the MinorityEye.com, Tamika Ali Sayre brings you this social report. I'm Tamika. I'm here with Carissa. We are at MT, M2 Boutique. Carissa, tell us a little bit about your store. M2 Boutique is a premier location here in Columbia, South Carolina. We feature uh, contemporary apparel, fun weekend wear for women ages 21 to 45. Okay, and we're celebrating Fashion's Night Out. What is Fashion's Night Out? What are we doing here? Yeah, Fashion's Night Out is a global initiative. Mm -hmm. um, it's led by uh, Vogue Magazine, American Vogue Magazine here in the United States. It started in 2009, and the purpose of it was to reinvigorate retail. We were in a down economy, and we just needed something to put the fun back in shopping. So that's what Fashion's Night Out is all about. And this year is the first year that Columbia actually participated. So we're the last time you guys out there. Thank you. We appreciate you allowing us to talk to you and talk to you about your boutique and what we're doing here. Now, where do you see, like, the, the style, the fashion for the South? Like, where do you see it going? Has it changed from what it was, you know, since you say that Vogue is uh, sponsoring this? What do you see the, the difference between the South and, like, Vogue? I know they're up North, but what do you see, like, as far as the potential? Well, that's funny that you say that because years ago, when I was growing up, you know, there was the Internet aging myself right here yeah. but the internet I'm right along wasn't with you. out yet and so you know fashion was very different yeah. in the north and the south it was a big disconnect and I remember my aunts in the south they would come to New York buy clothes buy clothes but now because you got television you, you know you got reality shows you've got internet everything is so virtual everything is so live that I mean fashion is almost it's just it lives everywhere right and I'm very happy to be in Columbia right now because it's emerging. The fashion scene is growing. It's, you know, people are hungry in Columbia for that fashion. Where in New York, in New Jersey, where I'm from, New Jersey, you take it for granted right. because it's just all around you. But here, people want more and more and more, and it's, it's fun. And there's a lot of activity going on, especially now with this year being Columbia's first year that we had a fashion week. So, you know, it's just, it's just really growing. It's birthday right now. I think Columbia, I think it's very satisfying. I mean, the women here, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I, you know, I agree with you. Just um, last month, I went to New York for a week. And uh, while I was there, I noticed all the fashion and how people were dressed, the shoes, everything. And when I got back here, I did realize that, you know what? A lot of the same stuff that's up there is down here. Absolutely. So I agree with you about Columbia's hungry and more, you know, becoming more fashionable. And not only that, but technology and media is making the making it more accessible, making it easier for people to, you know, to get their uh, the clothing that they see on TV. It's not just up there, but it's also trickling yeah, down, correct. you know. So, yeah, I think that's great. So, like, you, you told me a little bit before that you are here two years already, but you're looking to move. Yes, we're actually looking for a new location. Being in the business, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. However, I want to be able to offer my customers an overall experience, including uh, parking. Right. <laughs> parking is a big challenge here in the Vista downtown area. Everything's metered, nothing's dedicated. Yeah. So, you know, I just want to give my um, customers a better experience where they're not concerned about feeding a meter and getting ticketed and things like that. I just want them to have better overall shopping experience. Right. You have to make sure that you keep us posted like when you move so we can let our viewers know where you are Absolutely. so we can follow you, track you everywhere you go. Now, you mentioned that uh, when you were young, you watched your aunts buy the clothes and the fashion. Is this what sparked the vision for you to open your own boutique? You know, I don't really know what it was that made me want to go into fashion per se. Mm -hmm. I always have memories when I had, you know, Barbie dolls. Barbie didn't have as much clothes as Barbie has You're right. now. Yeah. And Barbie clothes were expensive relatively back then. Right. So, and I used to say, Mommy, I want Barbie clothes. I want the Barbie dress or whatever. And she went down in the basement and got this chest full of, like, scraps. And got some needle and thread. And she said, yeah, hey, I'm going to teach you how to make some Barbie clothes. Wow. So that might have triggered it a little bit. Um, I've been in retail. Like, 
that was my first major job out of of college so I've just been in retail for so long and just working for other people so long I wanted to apply some of the knowledge into my own because I right. always knew I wanted to own a business my dad owned a business and I just knew that that was something I wanted to do as well that's great and I, I think it's, it's good when when black women can do that you're giving back to your community you're doing what you love you know you have a, an event here we have a couple of singers here she's able to sing um, that's Katira and Katira. Katira, yeah, and they're doing a fabulous job. Beautiful girls, beautiful voices. Um, I really want people to come out. Six Seventeen Lady Street M Two Boutique. Um, but I really appreciate you doing this and opening the door. Now, as a business owner, what advice would you give to other young ladies who want to do the same thing you're doing? Whether it's you know with fashion retail or anything, any kind of business. Because it's not, it's not going to go the way you plan it out in right. your head, regardless of how many details. It's never going to go 100% the way you anticipate, but then you also have to have faith. You have to believe in yourself. You know, there's not always going to be people in your corner cheerleading you, even some family members. Some family members will tell you, just go get a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, they mean well, it's coming from a good place, but you have to stay headstrong and know this is what you want to do. And and just plan and just be prepared and keep faith and stay dedicated. I, I like your spirit. You're, you're a visionary. And a yeah. lot of the things that you say, you know, I can relate to because I myself want to be a, a, a business owner and I'm working on something now and, you know, doing this for television. But, um, I started out in retail myself at 18 years old. I work in retail now as a co-manager, so I understand like you know where you're coming from. Um, but when the, everything is like coming down, the market, the economy, where we are right now financially, how do you stay motivated to keep doing what you're doing? How do you keep pushing forward? It's a passion. When you love what it is that you do, you wake up every morning ready to do it. Um, definitely, the economy is down, but here at M2. Our price points are high, yeah. and I just want people to know that. Just because it's a boutique doesn't mean there's boutique prices. prices yeah. You know, we work with people. We have flexible payment options, what we call layaway, <laughs> what I call flexible <laughs> payment <laughs> options. So we try to include everyone. This is not about, you know, the haves and the have-nots. Right. Anybody can shop here. If you love fashion and, you know, whatever your budget or your purse size is, you come to your shop here. So, I mean, just... To get back to the question, you have to have that passion, that thing in you, whatever it is that you like to do, that makes you want to get up every morning and do it. Why sit behind somebody's desk or somebody's office or somebody's cell phone, right? You know, and that's just not what you want. That's and it's right. wasted energy. You don't, you don't feel it. That's, that's not right. what you want. But when it's what you want, even when the days are down, it's time to tell you still get back up and do it. Just like nothing ever happened. We really appreciate you. We thank you for allowing us to come out and talk to you. And not only myself, but everyone who will be watching, we can honestly say that we are proud of you. Thank you Aww. for doing what you do. <laughs> you are an inspiration, and you're even motivating me right now. So thank you. Once again, we're here with Carissa at M2, M2 Boutique. I'm sorry, 617 Lady Street. Ladies, please come out. Support this Fashion's Night Out. The Social Report is produced by TME Productions and distributed by The Minority Eye, affiliates of TME Media Group, a division of The Clairvoyant Company.